I hope everybody had a, uh, a restful spring break, um, or at least that you rested well at some point during spring break. We have a, uh, a very special chapel this morning, but before President Howerson introduces it, uh, I just wanted to make an announcement. We're going to have uh, a special uh, Bible study series through the season of Lent. So over the course of the next three weeks, uh, we're going to have campus-wide studies um, called Near the Cross, A Journey Through Lent. Uh, we're going to study the resurrection of Lazarus, uh, the Last Supper, and uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, there will be Bible studies for men and women in every hall on campus. In Andreas, your leaders will be Hannah King and Eric Kruger. In, yeah, in Founders, you'll have Marie Bowen and Chi San Liao. In Carter will be Claire Paquette and Chris Carter. And Mac will have Abby Camilli and Will Latner. Uh, they are starting this Thursday evening, March 15th at 8 p.m. So look for posters uh, in your halls. And now, welcome President Howerson. Good morning, Covenant College. Welcome back from spring break. Welcome to the blizzard of 2018. Uh, before we begin this morning, uh, let's open the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for uh, changes of seasons, for the rhythms of life, uh, for breaks like the one many of us have just enjoyed. Uh, we pray that as we return to our work, that you would strengthen and nourish us, that we might finish the semester well. And we pray that you be with us uh, in this time, Father. Pour out your spirit upon us. Make our time of fellowship uh, together this morning sweet. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So this morning, it's my privilege not only to introduce our chapel speaker slash performer, which I'll do in just a moment, but also to introduce the Rookmacher Jazz Scholarship. Uh, this jazz, this uh, endowed scholarship has been established to benefit incoming students who are pursuing jazz music education at Covenant College, and it's been established through the generosity of the Case family. Uh, parents of a couple uh, Covenant College alumna, uh, Bob and Kathy Case, who actually happen to be with us. They're hiding back in the corner there. Um, <laughs> we're deeply grateful for their longtime uh, support of the college, uh, charter members of the Parents Council here at the college, uh, faithful supporters and friends. I'm really glad they could be with us this morning. Uh, the scholarship is named in honor of the late Hans Ruckmacher, a Dutch uh, Christian intellectual professor, art scholar, and longtime friend of Francis Schaeffer, after whom our an annual Schaeffer Conference is named. Uh, Ruckmacher himself lectured here at Covenant during Labrie conferences in the 1970s. And in celebration of this new scholarship, we are hosting the first ever Covenant College Ruckmacher Jazz Festival today. Uh, to open this festival, we'll hear from two special guests in chapel this morning. In addition, everyone is invited to attend an evening jazz concert featuring our special guests and New City Fellowship Director of Music, Covenant College alum and adjunct professor of music here at Covenant, James Ward. Yes. Uh, that concert is at 8 p.m. this evening in the Kirk. Uh, the musicians will be joined this evening by Marlene Hengelar Ruckmacher, Hans Ruckmacher's daughter who is also here with us this morning. Would you guys please welcome Marlene? She was also here in the 70s with her father. Um, there'll be a dessert reception following this evening's concert. The event is free of charge. We know that college students like free. In memory of Hans Ruckmacher's faithful exploration of Christ's preeminence in the arts and specifically in the jazz music world, the Ruckmacher Jazz Festival emphasizes the value of the arts for Christian thinking and behavior. We'll explore this topic this morning through the insights and musical gifts of two special guests, the Reverend Dr. Bill Edgar and Miss Ruth Naomi Floyd. Uh, Bill Edgar is the John Boyer Chair of Evangelism and Culture at Westminster Theological Seminary in Philadelphia where he weds his expertise in covenantal apologetics with his interest in, among other things, African-American music and culture. Our esteemed musical guest this morning is Ruth Naomi Floyd, who has been expressing her faith through vocal jazz since 1993. She's recorded five albums of jazz music, including Root to the Fruit in 2006, 
She is a Philly girl through and through and apparently a big Philadelphia Eagles fan. Would you guys please welcome our guests? You, got, you, you guys jumped the gun, very enthusiastic this morning. Would you guys please welcome our guests, Bill Edgar and Ruth Naomi Floyd. Yes, I love the blues because I've been a Philly sports fan for all my life, and you have to understand and love the blues to be a Philly sports fan. But that all changed. Uh, with no liberation in sight, oppressed and dehumanized, the African prisoners of the forced labor system of American slavery lifted their heads composed songs and sang and created a body of music, the African-American spirituals, which were a quest for freedom. For hundreds of years, this body of music grew and then came the Emancipation Proclamation and their hopes for true and equal freedom were dashed. The burden of this newfound freedom hit them hard, and they developed and created a new body of music, the blues. And out of the blues, the blues spoke of the reality of the struggle and the depths of hardship of life. And from the blues came ragtime and jazz and so many other things. What are you saying, Miss Floyd? What I'm saying is that black music in America was birthed in sorrow and in despair, but rose and grew and tells the profound story from deepest despair to unspeakable joy. Is this not the path we call life? Is this not our journey with Christ walking beside us from deepest sorrow to joy, not happiness. Happiness is based on circumstance, but joy. How do you find joy in the midst of despair? How do you find beauty in the midst of ugliness? Come along tonight and hear deeper layers of this story that is so greatly aligned with theology and the greatest blues singer of all time who cried out the greatest blues line of all and sorry, it was not Ma Rainey. It was not Bessie Smith. It was Jesus on the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You cannot have the unspeakable joy of Easter Sunday without the deep despair of Good Friday. <laughs>
they liked it, Ruth. <laughs> um, what an honor and a pleasure to be here at Covenant, and um, especially for this remarkable occasion, the dedication of the Hans Ruckmacher Chair of Art History, but particularly for the purpose of featuring jazz, which is the music you need to know if you have any hope of going to heaven. <laughs> All right, we're at the right place. Um, it's okay, if, 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 um, if you don't love jazz, um, you, there's some time. It, it, not, not much, but there's time. Um, this uh, remarkable man whom we're honoring, uh, I first met in 1964. Uh, the earth was barely populated. Uh, <laughs> Remember those dinosaurs, Bob? Um, no, uh, I was a pretty young man, a brand new Christian, having come to uh, Labrie in high up in the Swiss Alps and having met uh, the most remarkable Francis Schaeffer, who talked to, me, talked to me about the gospel. It was a 
something I'd never heard particularly before. Um, and uh, I was completely smitten. Uh, it was the 60s. We, we, we wanted to be countercultural. And there wasn't much you could be more countercultural by doing than becoming a Christian, let me tell you. So I uh, did the countercultural thing. I, I came to faith and fell in love with uh, the Bible and with the gospel. When I was at Labrie, if you've ever been there, you know it's a series of chalets where uh, they, they families put up people and uh, students. And uh, one of the chalets was the study center. It was called Farrell House, named after the great reformer. And um, I was in there one day, and I looked up, and there was a chart of the history of African-American music, uh, beginning way back at the times of slavery and moving on through uh, minstrelsy, ragtime, uh, gospel, blues, jazz, and it was, it was good. I was a music student where I was in college, and um, I had a jazz band, and I thought, you know, these people are not only extremely, wonderfully, counterculturally cool because they believe in the Bible, but they, they're enlightened about God's music, and it's the music of jazz. And I soon found out that the author of this chart was a man named Hans Ruckmacher, who was a friend, probably the closest friend of Francis Schaeffer, and would come for regular visits. And he eventually uh, went back to Holland and stu uh, started Labrie in Holland, even though he taught art history at the Free University of Amsterdam. Um, he, early on, developed a love for the music of African American people. Um, perhaps more careful, less overtly emotional sometimes than Francis Schaeffer's, but his voice was clear, compelling, and utterly fascinating. Um, he spoke of the great artistry and authenticity of Victoria Spivy, Texas Alexander, Bumblebee Slim, Blind Willie Johnson, and a host of other founders of classic black music. Not only was Ruckmacher the European editor of Fontana Records series, Treasures of North American Negro Music, um, but he came to America. And when he came here, he, he met Thomas A. Dorsey, not to be confused with Tommy Dorsey. Thomas A. Dorsey, um, who was the most prolific gospel writer and singer, moved gospel into, into the city. Um, and then um, he, one of the high points of his life is he, he met the great Mahalia Jackson, greatest gospel singer of the 20th century. And um, there's a wonderful photograph of him standing outside her front door, um, which, you know, it's a privilege given to few people. He, he knew Langston Hughes, the great black poet. Um, what was the attraction of jazz to this Dutch art historian? Um, he was going to be the promoter in Europe of jazz during his entire career. Well, he said it in his lectures and throughout his writings. It put iron into the blood. Discussing his hero, Joseph King Oliver, the great cornetist, he compares New Orleans music to the music of Johann Sebastian Bach. He saw similar musical qualities in the Baroque polyphony of the Brandenburg Concertos and King Oliver's Creole jazz band from the 20s. But not just the technical structure, but the mood and atmosphere are similar. Ruth spoke about, spoke about going from um, deep sorrow to inexpressible joy. This, um, the music of King Oliver is very much a music of deep sorrow that, that bursts into joy, but not at, without going through the valley of the shadow of death. Um, as Ruth mentioned, he found in this music joy, which is not to be confused with happiness. Happiness is when you feel good about something, um, which is allowed. But uh, joy is when you've been um, darkened by sorrow, and yet you've sensed God's grace and redemption. And you emerge with something that's not happy, but that is deeply, deeply um, freeing and joyful. In stark contrast to Theodore Adorno, who was from uh, the Frankfurt School and was a sharp critic of jazz, uh, 
Ruckmacher found it wonderful. Adorno called jazz um, unruly, rebellious, emasculating. Ruckmacher describes it as orderly, harmoni harmonious, and yet full of life and vigor. Um, and so he became a lifelong lover and promoter of this extraordinary music produced by African-American people. Now, Ruckmacher's day job was to teach art history. And, um, but he wasn't satisfied just to be in the classroom and, and show slides and write books on, on the arts, though he could do that. Um, he liked to go and share this, his insights with the world. Traveled to America a lot. He was in our home many times. He was a, a close friend. And he went to England. He always supported individual artists. Um, even though he was sharply critical of some of the trends in modern art, he thought there was still plenty to do in the arts. Here's what he said. When we ask for Christian activity in the arts, we're not calling for a sectarian style, the art of a subculture. He didn't really like the term Christian art. We ask for art that is fully art, which springs from the fullness of what we are, and which takes into account the whole, excuse me, microphone, the whole reality in which we live, a reality immeasurably greater than simply the total nature of nature plus man. This is 60s talk, but it's beautiful, I think. Such art will express joy and beauty. It'll give honor and praise. It'll never close its eyes, on the other hand, to sin and misery. He was very critical of Christian art that was, you know, nice flowers and happy subjects. Um, he, he, he did not like, um, well, I won't name him. Um, it will be an art born of the freedom given to man by God. Art should be a form of play rejoicing before the face of God. Now, um, Ruckmacher was one of the most wonderful human beings that I've ever met. Um, he could be sharply critical of people who didn't get it. And sometimes people mi mistook his sharp criticisms uh, for um, personal dislike. Um, that's not what he wanted. He wanted to wake people up. Um, I was thinking I wasn't going to tell this story, but I think I will. I was in church with him once, and he gave a sermon. And it was a wonderful sermon, very deep. And I was standing with him at the door at the exit when people were greeting him. And one dear old woman said to him, oh, thank you so much, Dr. Ruckmacher. I really enjoyed your message. He said, well, if you enjoyed it, you didn't understand a word of it. <laughs> She's just trying to be nice, you know. But his message was about something very, very deep, and, and, and um, it wasn't something that you would think is enjoyable. Um, um, so he, he could tell you the way he thought, and he, he didn't, he didn't um, stop doing that. But because of that, he's the kind of friend you wanted, because he would, he, would, he would keep you honest. Um, one of my favorite emphases of, by Ruckmacher is that he wanted us, he wanted Christians, to be fully human. He was critical of the kind of platonic Christianity that is only interested in getting the soul a free ticket to heaven. He believed in heaven and getting the soul there, but he thought that so many Christians did that in an escapist way. So he made these radical statements. Um, Christ did not come down from heaven to convert human beings to become Christians, in other words, heavenly citizens, but he came to make Christians human meaning earth-involved images of God. So uh, that was his life's emphasis, and so many of us benefited from it, and we're so pleased that you're honoring him here with this chair. Um, he died much too young. He was 57, I think. Uh, he was given a clean bill of health by the doctor, and, and then a few days later, he, he died of a heart attack. One of the great losses, sometimes, I mean, I teach apologetics up at Westminster, and I teach, I have a course called Theodicy, The Problem of Evil. Why, Lord? And um, I don't have the answers sometimes, a lot of times. And one of my why, Lord, why did you take Hans so soon? He seemed to have had much more to give. And the only answer I can think of is we have a legacy to, and a responsibility to carry it on. If you are a Christian, don't be ashamed of it, he said. Work out of the fullness of your being and give it the best you have. 
You can never be better than you are, but be ashamed to be less. But you fall into pride and foolishness if you want to be more. This means do not be afraid. Live out your freedom. Do not let this be spoiled by your sinfulness. Sin takes freedom away. Walk in his way, yes, but this must be done out of your own convictions, out of your own understanding, in love and freedom. It is never just the application of some rules, some do's and don'ts. It is more real, more honest. It should be a commitment. I hope that's a message that will endure here and throughout this generation and beyond. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, eight o'clock tonight. Don't tell me you've got a whole lot of assignments because you just got back from spring break. Uh, come, come get fed. Uh, let's, let's close in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of music. We thank you for the gift of jazz. And we pray that you would help us uh, to live in keeping with that gift, to live lives, lives that are honest about the brokenness in this world, but that um, rejoice in the good news of Jesus Christ and his reconciling work in this world. We thank you, Father, for Hans Ruckmacher, uh, for his witness to your preeminence in all things. And we pray that you would be glorified through our efforts to continue his legacy here at Covenant College. Father, bless us uh, this day as we return to our work. We pray it's in the name of the greatest of blues vocalists, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.